I know that I have two houses, and I take the opportunity that you are here to, to present you just a few advertising sessions because René made some advertisement for his, uh, his book. I have a, a library, STOPT. It's a stochastic optimization library, and it's, uh, it's free. My, uh, my optimization library is free. It's not mine because I'm the main developer. And uh, uh, what it's doing is uh, providing, it's a separate crystal box with a Python interface. It provides regression methods for conditional expectation. For example, if you want to solve BSDs, with local uh, uh, linear constant per mesh approximation or local adaptative uh, to the distribution. You can use global polynomials. You even can use some sparse uh, grids uh, for very high dimension for the regressions. It provides you some interpolation methods. For example, uh, linear, monotone legendre, and sparse grids, for example. So uh, interpolation methods can be used if you want to, to tackle some stock, uh, stock problems, for, for example, energy problems. And uh, it aims to solve some uh, IGB question with some deterministic methods, semi Lagrangian ones. And uh, we, we, for problems with stocks, it permits to use a, a regression with Monte Carlo for non control process. And you can use a, a stochastic Monte Carlo quantization for a controlled process. And when you've got a linear problem in very high dimension, you can use a, a stochastic dual dynamic programming method, which is a method which is quite, uh, quite used in. Uh, discrete optimization. So it is parallelized with message passing, which is threaded, and it's based on uh, Eigen uh, library, which is a, a library developed at Nerea. So it's an open source, so it is free once again. If you want to use it, uh, don't hesitate for your, for your course, for your, your project, for example. Uh, you've got a lot of documentation, which is here. It has been developed during uh, the INR Kesar, which is a uh, which is the main sponsor of the, of the SEMRAC this year, I think. And uh, here uh, you can find some Python, uh, some Python installer. So what I want to say is try to avoid to redevelop everything. Branching is not here right now, but it will be in a, perhaps in a, when I, I think it will be quite uh, mature, I would say. So I think uh, now I'm finished with uh, the small presentation of this library. And uh, I think everybody is here now. So first, I didn't, but I want to thank all the, the organizers because the organization was very good. Uh, it's very good uh, with some excursions. Uh, very nice dinner yesterday, even if I know it's uh, quite, uh, quite difficult this morning. <laughs> uh, so I will go on with, uh, with branching. So uh, I, will, I will come uh, to the 70s. And we'll, uh, branching is... Uh, was developed during the 70s by McKin for KPP equations. And I will show you how to, to derive, to generalize uh, this, uh, the equation it was able to, to, to tackle. And I will show you how to, uh, at last, for point five, how to tackle a uh, general driver of U, even, even if they are not polynomial. Then after, I will go, back, I will, uh, I will, uh, go on after on the semilinear equations, and I will finish on uh, the full, full linear case to show you that it's possible to, to solve some full nonlinear equations with uh, branching, but we don't have any results. Uh, we just have numerical results. We know that it's true that it's converging for small uh, maturities, but we don't have any results. So it will be a, an opportunity for me to, to, to ask you if you want to, to, to work on the subject. New forces will be welcome. Um, of course, Nizar, uh, Xiaolu have tried to do it and uh, without success, but so it's not very easy, I think. <laughs> so, branching for KPP equation. So, it was uh, developed during uh, the 70s by McKean. Here is the equation you want to, you want to solve. So, it's a classical equation with a, a, a nonlinear term. Here, you got a final, uh, a final condition G. Uh, mu and sigma are constant. And here, the nonlinearity is this one U2 minus 1. So, of course, you consider the, the process associated to the, to the generator, this one, okay? And uh, supposing regularity of the solution, you can use uh, uh, Ito to get this expression here, okay? And using uh, uh, the equation satisfied by U, 
you, re you replace and uh, uh, a nonlinear term appears here, uh, u squared. And uh, what you see is uh, that this uh, corresponds to the density of uh, an exponential law, and this corresponds to uh, 1 minus the CDF of an exponential law. So what you can do is try is to interpret this integral as an expectation. Okay? So you will, uh, you will introduce a person process with density beta, and uh, you can see you have this expression Okay, coming from the previous expression. So you've got that u is the expectation on uh, g on the case where tau 1 is higher than capital t, uh, t, and you got this expression, a nonlinear term, when tau 1 is smaller than capital T. Okay, so you can rewrite this. u is equal to the, exp uh, the expectation of c with c that has this expression. Then after you introduce uh, some uh, uh, another two other process, Poisson process, uh, with intensity beta, of course. And what you can see is that you've got this nonlinear term. Here, you can rewrite it this way. So you use this expression for the first u term with, uh, uh, with the first uh, stochastic process, uh, Poisson process, and you've got this expression for the second u. So by independence, you've got this equation. And then what you have to do is to inject this equation here shifted with a, with a good position and good time, okay? So you, you see that recursively, you can have a, a method and you will go on till, till you arrive, all the particles that will generate it, we arrive at, uh, at the time capital T. So, well, as I said, you plug two, uh, two into one, you introduce T, I, I will keep all the notation, always the same notation during the presentation. So T1 is for the first particle, 1 G is for the particle that is generated from 1, G is equal to, uh, to 1 or 2. So T1 is a, a capital T min, uh, a minimum of uh, to 1, and uh, T1 G is a minimum of capital T, and T1 plus the increment due to uh, the Poisson process. So injecting what you get is this the thing. You can be re written as the expectation. So if T1 is equal to T, uh, to T, you've got this. If T1 is uh, lesser than capital T, you've got the product due to the uh, U square. Okay? And here you recognize if T1G is equal to T, you take the G, G value, otherwise you go on. Okay? So what you get is this kind of tree, KPP tree. You, 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 you begin with one, one, uh, one particle, so it's written one. Then uh, when uh, there is a branching, okay, you generate two particles, one, one, and one, two. And then you go on, you branch again, one, one, one. So one, one gives one, 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 and one, one, two. And then this one, you arrive at capital T, you stop. And then you branch here till you get all the branches at uh, date capital T. This is a Galton Weston tree for KPP. So uh, I will give you the notation that we'll keep uh, during, uh, uh, during all the presentation. So K is a K particle. A particle, so is a NU play. NU play is a particular, pro, uh, particular of generation N. And K, K, e, KI is equal to one or two, okay? So the ancestor of this particle, of course, you suppress the, the, this term. So this is a particle of generation n uh, minus one, and you take, uh, you take by definition that for the first particle, its ancestor is uh, an empty set. So uh, kappa nt is a set of all living particles of generation n at date t. Uh, kt is a set of all living particles at date t, and for kappa bar, that will be the set of all particles alive before t. Okay, I will show you on a graph. So to, to kappa is a Poisson process associated to the particle. And of course, as I said before, you've got this branching time for particle K, meaning that uh, here is the ancestor of the particle K. So uh, the new, uh, uh, the particle K is branching at that TK, which is TK minus plus the increment, the Poisson process associated to the particle. Of course, you stop when you arrive at uh, time T. So, uh, just to show you with the same example as before, of course, the ancestor of this particle, this is 111. One, one. 
kappa 3t is a set of particles of, uh, of generation 3 that are alive at date t. So you've got uh, this one, which is generation 3, and you've got this one. And of course, kappa, uh, kappa uh, 4t, all the other particles here, generation 4, uh, uh, generation 4, you've got four particles. And kappa, kappa bar t, is a set of all particles because this is all, all the particles that's been alive before date capital T. So you keep all this notation in mind. So what we introduce is a, is a Brownian motion. Uh, some, uh, we use some uh, d-dimensional Brownian motion. And for a particle that has not arrived at date capital T, you have the dynamic. So the dynamic should be written this way. You take the, the, the position at date of the, its ancestor here, and then after, you go on with uh, the current uh, uh, with the current process with the dynamic, okay? And what you see is that you've got an estimator when you, you use uh, the, the, the 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 tree. What you have is a multiplication of all uh, the values x for particles that arrive at capital T. For, so for all particles that belong to kappa capital T. And what can be uh, shown is that the number of particles is finite. The global number of particles is finite, and that if uh, g uh, is bounded by one, uh, u is uh, regular enough. You know that uh, u hat is l1 and l2, and that you, uh, you've got that uh, uh, u can be written as the expectation of u hat. So this is a very simple case, and I, I will show you after uh, slowly how we can go further and further with uh, coming from this uh, special case. So first generation of KPP equation. You take the same, so if you've got a, a nonlinear PDA which is the same, the, the nonlinear term is, is slightly different because it is a, the sum of some kk, uk minus uk. Before, before it was a special case with only one pk and a k was equal to two. And you suppose that uh, the sum of pk is equal to one and that the, all the pk are positive so that you can interpret them as uh, probability, pro, uh, probabilities. So, if you write the feynman cac equation as before, you've got exactly the same. What is different is that the nonlinear term is, uh, is different. And you introduce, you say, okay, I will introduce uh, for particle k, uh, i k, which is random such that, such that the probability is that i k is equal to l is equal to p l. So you re reinterpret this as an expectation and you've got this expectation here. So it is the same as before, but here you choose randomly the coefficients, the polynomial coefficients that you will treat. Okay? So knowing that you've got this condition of, uh, for the discrete uh, IK. And you've got the same estimator. So U is equal to the expectation of the product of all uh, uh, the values taken for particles that arrive at date capital T. So this is the first extension. A second one extension, which was developed by, uh, oh, so I will show you <laughs> on the graph, just to be uh, pedagogic. I don't know if it's English, but uh, okay. So here, you've got one particle. Here, in fact, you will, uh, uh, you will draw, you will sample, and you will get this, you will take this, uh, this term because you've got three, you've got three branches. When you arrive here, you sample again and you will take this one because the particle will disappear. When you arrive here, you've got one, one, uh, one branch, meaning that you sample this term. Here, you sample two terms, it meaning that you have taken this, this, uh, this term, okay? So this is uh, an example of, uh, of the Galton uh, Watson tree for this uh, generalized uh, KPP. So now uh, I will show you how to treat some uh, general uh, polynomial drivers. This work was done by uh, Pierre-Henri Labordaire. It was proposed uh, not so not a uh, long time ago. In fact, there was a big gap between the, the work of McKean and uh, uh, the, this work that are quite recent. So the first exception of KPP, you imagine that you've got a, a nonlinear PDA, which is this one. I take a slightly different uh, notation. You've got F hat, I, 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 I leave the, the beta, no beta here, uh, with F hat, which is 
a polynomial with coefficients that can be negative, positive, as you want. So you can choose some p, p, uh, pi, i equal 0 to n. You, you choose them. You can choose one, uh, some beta. And uh, choosing this term, you can rewrite this equation as this one. OK, so this is similar to the previous case. And you've got here, uh, you've got the new uh, f function, of course. You've got some i, uh, a i here, here as that can be negative, it can be whatever value you want. And you've got the connection between this and this during this, uh, by this, uh, this equations. So what you will do now, you will mark the tree. Mark the tree is, me is meaning that each time you branch, when you branch three, for example, I will, I will notice, I will, I will keep in mind that I, I generated three particles here. Here I generated one particle, and green, I will generate two particles. So this is a max, uh, uh, max Gaussian tree. And once again, you rewrite a Feynman CAC. Rewriting Feynman CAC, you get exactly the same as before. So you sample for the term you want to treat as before, with uh, the i uh, high, high here. But here you've got a coefficient. Okay, which is, uh, which is coming, uh, which was not present before. So, uh, what, uh, with uh, under some uh, sufficient condition, this one, uh, you've got some calculus to, to show it, it's not depending on pk, you know that u will, can be written as the expectation of phi, and phi is a product of all uh, particles that arrived uh, at uh, date uh, capital T, and all the AK that was encountered during the branching process, meaning that if a particle has not, is, has not reached capital T, you've got an AK to remember, and uh, you can rewrite this as the, uh, the product of the AI, WI, and WI is the number of particles that was branching with a branching of type I. Okay? Then after you can show that you can, uh, PK can be chosen, to minimize the variance with a uh, with this term. So I'll give you an example with the same. So here, uh, the value uh, on this tree. Here, you've got a branching of uh, three of type three, you've got A3. You go here, you've got A0, no branching, the, the, the particle disappear. And then you go here, you've got a branching of type one, A1. You go on, branching of type two, A2. And then you multiplied by the j achieved at each branch. Okay. Then you go here. You multiply by uh, a3, a3, and uh, you've got two branches here that arrive at that capital T, and you have j and j here. And then you go here. You multiply it by a2, and you've got two uh, j values here corresponding to here and here. So here is uh, uh, the value you obtain on this branch. So you do it again and again and again. You take the average, and you've got an estimation. So uh, here I said, OK, you sample to take the power of u you want to treat. OK, but it's not uh, the only way you can do it. For example, you can choose to, to tackle each term here and do the summation. The advantage is that the, the disadvantage is that you don't have any representation. But uh, uh, disadvantage, you have an exponential of the computation time if there are many terms of the polynomial or too long maturities. <coughs> the advantage is that you reduce the variance using these methods. And uh, it is e as easy a program as the initial algorithm. So two alternatives. In fact, generally, I use this, this kind of uh, uh, method because it reduces the variance, and the variance is a uh, the thing we want to reduce for this method. So now I will, uh, I will show you how to treat a general driver if f is not a polynomial, and uh, it will be based on the work of, uh, of Bruno. So the, the driver is uh, written at fu, at the uh, work of Bruno, Xiaolu, and uh, Z. And I join for the numerics. So uh, the approximation of the driver by a local polynomial, you suppose that you've got this expansion. So uh, mm. 
So you've got this expansion, meaning that locally you, you introduce some uh, fee function, which, which on, oh, that on localizing the polynomial, so the fee function on, on nearly uh, some uh, uh, indicatrice function, but not, not, not exactly. You, you take some smoothing condition. You want the fee function to be continuous and uh, uh, to be a Lipschitz, and you want to, of course, to be bound by one. And numerically, what we will do, we will, in fact, we will use indicatrice. So if you use indicatrice, for example, you can see that this corresponds, in fact, to quite a spline approximation of a function, meaning that on each indicative function, you've got a polynomial representation. OK? So once again, with this driver, what you can do is to use Famencac. So uh, what I did is I just uh, rewrite the, uh, the expectation uh, dividing uh, by uh, one minus the CDF here. Its name is F bar. And I introduce uh, the density the same as before. And uh, I, I rewrite it at the expectation. So two terms as before. Uh, if tau one is uh, greater than capital T, you take the final value uh, divided by uh, uh, F bar before it was uh, exponential mi minus uh, beta t. Otherwise, uh, you've got this term to tackle. And the problem here, of course, here you've got a polynomial, but here you don't know what is uh, the value of u, so you don't know which uh, phi to take, what is the, the value taken by phi, and what is the relevant, the relevant phi for the summation. So if you've got an indicative function, only one of the terms will be uh, 1g, Will be, uh, will be used. So this is a problem. So what was proposed, uh, because it's impossible to, to, to treat like that, is uh, uh, to rewrite f this way. So you write f x y as f at x y y prime, and there's no prime, but it's just, there should be uh, y y, sorry. And uh, you introduce some probability, uh, and f at is written this way, x, y, y prime, and you've got y, uh, y exponent l, and c, uh, g, y prime. OK? So what you can do, so you can derive a theoretical algorithm, which is only theoretical. I will show you why. In fact, you, 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 you start with an, uh, with an estimation of the value uh, u0. And you take this estimation of the u0 to estimate, each time you want, the phi value. When you've got the phi value, all you have to do is uh, to treat this equation, which is uh, uh, the general one we, we've shown before. And you've got a representation, which is this one. OK. So this is a product of the j, uh, j for particles that arrive at uh, bit capital T, multiplied by, uh, for all particles that didn't arrive, all the weights that we've seen before, OK? Of this weights, in this way, you've got the C, uh, uh, G uh, functions, which are functions of the previous iteration. So you can use some uh, upper uh, bound to, uh, to bound the solution with this one. And you go on, you say, OK, I go on, and I will, uh, I will uh, go on till I reach OK, a uh, uh, fixed point, and uh, then I'm finished. But the problem here is, in fact, that when you, you, you use this algorithm, you knew the value of u values only at some points. And you can't use, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the previous iteration like this, because you have got some, some, uh, some, some you, you know the value on u at, at some points. So what has been shown is uh, it's converged with, uh, for small maturities and for small coefficients. In fact, all the. Okay. For this one? Yeah. OK, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, OK. OK. So here, no, no, uh, it should be. In fact, you can't use it because, uh, uh, because uh, it's, not, it's not possible this way. So what you can do is uh, uh, to introduce a grid. So in fact, you think of a grid. When you think of a grid, you think, OK, I will face the curse of dimensionality, of course. So uh, I will show you that we can have good example even in quite high dimension. So I, I choose a grid. The grid is, is given this way. OK, 
for, to discretize the, the y here. So the grid is, is given here, for example, in 2D and uh, uh, at different dates. And uh, phi j is an indicator function, not regular. We take this one, uh, numerically this one is taken. And so when you've got a, a general f function, you will use a quadratic or cubic expansion, spline, cubic, or quadratic, with c1 or c2 regularity defining the f expansion. So at each date, you define some discretized date. So uh, for example, you've got, uh, uh, you want to solve uh, the equation on, the, on this time till, uh, till the date capital T. You split it here in three. And what you will do, you will calculate uh, uh, the, the, the solution at all this point here. But instead of using for phi uh, the function uh, that you don't know, you will take here the function j given at the step line here, the final condition. And then here you will do the same, interpolating during the point. I will show you the algorithm. So you need an interpolator. And uh, on each interval, you, you solve a, a, branching, a branching system for all the points. This is the first, uh, the first thing you can do. So, so the, do you mean you start from each point, you start a branching? Yeah, yeah. each point you start the branching, and it's a backward because you begin with the last, last uh, date of interpolation and you go on till, uh, till the beginning. So at the, at the first date, you take, uh, to estimate your function, you take the function j, okay? And then you solve on the, on the first uh, time step. And then for all the time steps, you take uh, the solution obtained at the following date to, to have an estimate of this function. So this is the first thing you can, uh, can do. Of, of course, here, the final function, you've got, uh, you've got to interpolate it because you've got the solution only on some, uh, some, uh, some uh, discrete uh, time step. Okay? So a remark on the algorithm, no Picard uh, iteration is, uh, is needed. It's a pure uh, explicit scheme, uh, but interpolation is needed. So uh, when you think of it, you can, you can compare this methodology with a general uh, a semi lagrangian methods uh, where that on deterministic methods where you need interpolation and you what you have is a CFL, a courant friedrich levy stability condition for some schemes and uh, uh, connecting time and spatial discretization. Here, you replace the CFL with a variance condition. Uh, you want it to be, uh, to be as, as low as possible so that you don't have to take so many particles. Uh, what you can do is to use uh, some uh, high order interpolators to minimize the number of, uh, of points you need uh, to take on the regular grids. Of course, you are subject to the grid, uh, to the cursor of dimension, but I will show you an example that you can go till uh, dimension five, something like this. And I will show you uh, how. Uh, does it work? So I take, uh, I take this, uh, this equation. The domain is a bounded domain, zero to uh, uh, in each dimension. The coefficients are here. So they are taken so that uh, uh, the particles stay inside the domain. Okay. So the solution is uh, not bounded by one. I took uh, because uh, it's easier. So I wanted to have a, a test case where it's not so easy for, for this. So I choose a, 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 a solution which is this one. So at, uh, at uh, the last date, you got uh, t equal, equal to capital T system disappear. And I uh, implemented this algorithm using some uh, monotone interpolator of the of the of, uh, degree three. Uh, this was an interpolator that I developed, it, I developed uh, for semi-Lagrangian methods. First case, uh, it's quite complicated because I wanted to have an uh, analytical solution. <laughs> so I take I take a function f, which is this one, quite quite so it is a function of uh, of y, which is quite complicated. And uh, uh, I take uh, phi, which is uh, this one, this, this thing, so that uh, 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 my solution is uh, the thing I, I show you. So then after, I made some experiments. So uh, what I said, uh, I, I used a lot and a lot of points, uh, so that the variance is uh, small enough and the Monte Carlo is error is small enough. And then I used uh, some uh, different time step and different cubic spline uh, uh, numbers. Of course, the higher number of spline you, 
you put, uh, the, the higher the, uh, the accuracy should be. And I show you that, in fact, because of the fee, it's not so obvious. So when you take uh, not a lot uh, of spline, you've got an error which is one um, person, for example, when you use cubic spline methods with uh, 80 time steps. If you uh, decrease the, the number of time steps, if you, if you increase the number of spline, you've got the red curve here, which is very good. So uh, the error is always uh, lower than 0.2%. And if you, dec you decrease the number of time steps, the error is going up here. So with the quadratic spleen on this example, it's uh, more oscillating. And uh, here, the cubic spleen is better, but it depends on the function. I will show you an example of when uh, uh, the cubic spleen is not, not so good as uh, the quadratic one. So the second, the second case, test case, I take a, I take a function uh, uh, f x y, which is this one, a function of y plus a function of x. The function of y is uh, quite a small coefficient here because you want uh, the nonlinearity not to be too, too high. So it is not linear, it's linear plus a sinus. And uh, the f uh, x is written this way. So, you use, the method, you use the methodology, and uh, uh, I check with different time steps, with different cubic spline, and here you see that uh, with the cubic spline, you can get quite a, a good accuracy, but the accuracy is 0.2%, uh, so it's uh, good, but with quadratic spline method, for this test case, for 40 quadratic splines and 80 time steps, you've got an error which is uh, 0.01%, very, very, very low. So it can be very, very accurate, but it's hard to, 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 to know which, sorry? So the speed is for five, so. the, 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 the fee is for five, the number of five. So the number of uh, steps you discretize the, this equation here. So here with the uh, quadratic spline method, you've got uh, a very good uh, accuracy. Then I made some, uh, so it was in, a, in a one day. Then I, first remark, so if you use a small number of, of spline, it gives you a large error, of course. You have got to, you've got to approximate uh, the driver, which uh, is, uh, the driver is not well approximated, so you've got uh, a larger error, which is control. But uh, the larger, the, the, and the larger time step in means that uh, because of the diffusion, the, the error on the phi you estimate is, uh, is more likely to happen. So if you use a, 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 a large number of spline, you've got some very small error on the driver, but because you've got a lot of small meshes, the, the error that you, you, will, uh, you, will, uh, you, will, you will get a, a wrong phi is higher. Okay? So, but in fact, when you use a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, meshes, uh, if you've got a wrong, a wrong polynomial, the polynomials are very close to each other when they, are, uh, they correspond to, to, uh, to indicatrice position uh, uh, very close to. So the error is not, uh, is not so big. And what you have to do, in fact, is to, to use quite a high number of time steps because it limits the variance of the problem. And in fact, if you interpolate quite often, you will, you will lose, you will take a very low number of Monte Carlo simulation, and in fact, uh, it converges uh, uh, more rapidly. And uh, the, uh, it's better to use a second order interpolator so that you limit the number of interpolation points. So I, I, I give some multidimensional <laughs> results. So I take the, the same results as the previous one with the F1 and F2. F1 was a, uh, a function of uh, y and a sinus y, and f2 is this one in, uh, in a multi-dimensional case. And I, I give some results in dimension three. 40 splines, 80 time steps, you've got an error which is, uh, which is, uh, uh, which is can, can go to, uh, to uh, two percent. In fact, here is, uh, I enumerated the points, and for each point, I gave the error. And all the error here correspond to the uh, to, 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 to the U values that, that have the highest, uh, uh, the highest la, uh, values, in absolute value. So uh, the higher the value is uh, for you, of course, uh, the, the more difficult is uh, uh, as, uh, for the scheme it is to converge. 
And if you use 80 splines and 160 time steps, you see that the error is always lower than, or nearly always lower than 0.2%. If you want to go higher, you can't do and you can't interpolate with uh, uh, regular uh, regular meshes. What you have to do is to use sparse grids. I don't know if you use them, if you know uh, you know about them. Instead of using some uh, grids with tensorization, you 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 get to read a, a lot of points and you get an accuracy which is nearly as uh, the same as with full grids for very uh, very uh, uh, regular solutions for very regular functions. So. I used sparse grid, so with sparse grid I was able to go to dimension four and dimension five, and here is the error is uh, in dimension four is 0.2 uh, percent at most for 80 splines and 160 time steps, and uh, for in dimension five I got an error which is uh, higher because it takes quite a lot of time, uh, less than uh, 100 uh, 100 percent one one percent. <laughs> 100% it would be uh, not so good. I agree. So if there is a modified version, in fact, we solved, as I said, okay, we solved on each here, I solve here, then I solve here, then I solve here, so three resolution. What you can do, if uh, the, the J function has a, is, is bounded by one, for example, so that the, the, the algorithm has no variance problem, you can solve first on this, then you solve on this, and then on this. So, okay, when you, you, when you solve on this, you will use the information given by the interpolation here, by, by the values here, to uh, update the phi, the phi function. So, the algorithm becomes this one. First, this is the same, the same as before, but here, uh, uh, no, this, I hope, the previous one, yeah, this is a good algorithm. Here, you, you, you interpolate, uh, you, you estimate the phi with a J function, and you take the final value. But at the following step, you will take all, always the J function, but you will take uh, the U function at the, tape, at the time step after uh, the, the date TK. Okay? So this is a, uh, another, uh, uh, another this is a modified version, and uh, in fact, when the problem is quite simple, it is better to do this. When the, the problem is harder, it's better to, to use the first algorithm. So, I will uh, do some recall on Malevin weights, because I know that uh, it has been presented a lot, but I, I, I will show some variations. Uh, first, I will, I will give the results with some I think most of you know, but because it's a course, I will, uh, I will, uh, I will do it again. So you suppose you've got uh, this kind of uh, uh, SDA. You suppose that the, the coefficients are continuous with bounded continuous uh, gradients, d, d mu and d sigma, and sigma is uniformly ellip uh, elliptic. You suppose that phi is, bonded, uh, is a bounded uh, measurable function, and you define the tang tangent process with this uh, SDA, so it, uh, it takes into account the derivative of mu and the derivative of g. And you've got the automatic differential rules, meaning that if you want to estimate uh, the expectation of the, of the phi at, at, uh, of x s at the at date s uh, uh, after t, all you have to do is to take the expectation of the phi value multiplied by the weight, which is a malleven weight. Of course, uh, when uh, when uh, mu is constant, sigma is constant, all this disappears, and, uh, and the tangent process is a constant. In this case, you've got uh, the very well-known uh, relation. I will show you for, for people who don't know about it. If you want to differentiate, uh, you, you, the differentiation goes into for, 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 for phi here, uh, under the expectation. Then you write it with a uh, with the kernel of the Gaussian, and you integrate by part, and this weight is appearing, and this weight is just the Malieven weight, so it can be written this way. The problem with this is that, in fact, uh, you've got a high variance if s is uh, close to t. Of course, the variance evolves as c is uh, uh, divided by s minus t. So this is a problem. 
uh, what you can do is to use some, some uh, variance reduction. This kind of uh, variance reduction was proposed by Avelaneda and Co. Uh, for second-order second bases when they were computing the, they were computing the, the, the Z. And what they do is they retrieve the value X, the phi of X. Doing this, this is, of course, the expectation of this is equal to zero. And uh, um, what you can see is, of course, if you use uh, some Taylor, uh, the mean value, uh, the mean value here, you, you can see that is bonded. This is bonded by uh, the, the, uh, the infinite, uh, the L, L, L infinite value of phi prime. Another reduction value you can use is to define the antithetic. The antithetic is just to take the same uh, drift, but you take the opposite. You take the opposite, uh, uh, the opposite value for the Brownian motion. And when you want to estimate the weight, you can do this. And you've got this, uh, which is, of course, an estimation. And of course, uh, uh, it, is a, it has a bounded variance. So for the second order derivative, this is the same. Suppose mu and sigma are constant, uh, phi are regular enough. Uh, by integrating by parts, you've got this equation. So uh, the second order derivative is just the, the expectation of phi multiplied by the weight, and the weight, the maximum weight of second order is this one. Proofs, uh, of course, uh, we don't do it, but it's double integration by parts. The problem with this is that it's uh, harder than before, because when uh, s minus t is small, you've got a very high variance and the variance is, uh, is this one. And uh, to tackle this problem, when the time step is very small, you can use some reduction techniques, uh, reduction variance techniques. So if you use this term and the antithetic term multiplied by W, they, are, they have the same value, of course. And this is orthogonal to this, so uh, the expectation is disappeared. And uh, when you use a Taylor expansion of this term, you can see that it's, uh, uh, with the mean value theorem, it is. Uh, uh, phi second of psi multiplied by s minus t multiplied by this weight. So uh, here it's uh, one, minus, uh, 1 divided by s uh, minus t, so the term disappears. So you've got a bounded variance. You can do better. Well, I think it, uh, it is better. Uh, what you can do is to use two first order derivative and two, two successive steps with, uh, with a various reduction, with a previous various reduction. And what you, uh, you, you, you will get is just here you will see uh, the first order my event weights on the first time step and the second order my event on the second time step. And you've got, uh, here you've got uh, uh, the phi value, which is, uh, okay, the value of the, of the process value with a drift, without the burn and motion, and you take each part of the burn and motion here for the two, for the two Sufi functions. It's, uh, in practice, it's more effective than the previous one. In fact, I, I noticed this when uh, I was solving some uh, second order based years, because uh, uh, Sheredito proposed a scheme. He was differentiating the Z uh, to get the, in the second order, uh, to get the second, second order differentiation, and uh, with NISA, we are using the, the, the major and weight, the current major and weight, which is this one. And in fact, on numerical results, we saw that the uh, uh, shared Dito approach was always better. Always better on numerical results. Uh, it was always better. And uh, in fact, we'll see uh, later that this approach is, uh, can, can be better. So often more effective. And then after, the last one, which is you can use antithetics on the previous estimation. So using antithetics, you will have the same terms here, but each time you've got a term with a plus, you will get a term with a, with a minus appearing here. Okay, so it's far more complicated, but uh, in fact, you will see that for branching, this is the best, this is the best approach for second order, uh, for full nonlinear equations. So I will go on, perhaps I will, I will make a small break in a, in a, in a few minutes, but I will I will go on to show you how to 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 solve some linear PDAs without uh, without other schemes for some good uh, good uh, good coefficients. So 
The problem is that you want to solve this equation. It's an linear equation with a final value j. And here is uh, SDA followed by the process. So it's a uh, non-constant here. And here is uh, the L operator associated, the generator associated to, to the process. And the question is how to solve this Euler scheme uh, with some uh, uh, conditions uh, with on regular regularity and the coefficients. So what you can do, first, you froze the coefficient within uh, uh, the L operator. So here I, uh, I put uh, L tilde, X tilde, L, X tilde, X tilde, for, to say that the coefficients are frozen to the value uh, T tilde, X tilde in the coefficients. So the SD with the frozen coefficient is, uh, is this one, okay? And so you can rewrite the, the linear equation as this one, introducing uh, the, the operator with the frozen coefficients. Well, and of course, the H operator is only the difference between uh, the L and the L tilde operator. Using feynman cac for regular A, you got that U can be written as the expectation of the value, uh, final uh, value plus the integral of uh, the H function uh, with dynamic uh, of the here starting at date uh, t tilde uh, x tilde and uh, which is uh, which, with t tilde equal to uh, uh, with, uh, with dynamic frozen with dynamic frozen uh, with coefficient frozen at t tilde x tilde and starting at point T, uh, T and X. Okay. So, using my even weights, you can differentiate the previous equation, and you got the same thing multiplied by the my even weights. So here you use first order my even weights, and you've got uh, the same expression for second order my even weights. So what you can do now is to introduce a, a stochastic mesh. So this is exactly the same as branching. In fact, we will branch, but instead of generating more particles, each time we branch, we, we will keep only one particle. So we'll take the same notation. F bar is uh, one minus uh, the CDF of the, of the, of the law. Rho, eh, rho is the density of the, uh, of the, of the process, <coughs> associated to the process. Uh, so you freeze the coefficient between two time steps. Now doing this, you've got this, uh, this evolution. Okay, the time steps are always uh, frozen to the to at the previous time step to the value taken before. Similarly to branching, okay, with uh, the value on u, okay, you apply your branching process, the same as before, and you got here you got the expectation of the h function. And the x function is a function of du and d2u. Uh, and because we still have to add an expression for du and d square u here, uh, uh, involving the Mayan one weights, you can inject this and this inside here and here, and you go on recursively, injection and injection, till you arrive at that at that capital T. So the representation is the same as before, but the weights will be, uh, as, that will be associated to it branching will correspond to the Mayovan weights. So you can rewrite U, which is the expectation by feynman cac of, of G, as the expectation of J for all particles that arrive divided by uh, uh, F bar, multiplied by all the weights, and the weights are only uh, the sum of two weights. Uh, um, a part coming from the, the first order uh, Malivan weights multiplied by the difference of the value UK taken at, at, a, at a two, two uh, branching dates. And here you've got the weights associated to a second order Malivan and uh, with a difference of uh, uh, an AK. So the problem is this weight. This one is fourth order, first order, and this weight is second order. And what can happen is that, in fact, if the, the, the the, the, the time step are too small, the variance of this term due to this term will explode. So, you got a representation that can, be, uh, that can be used involving a reduction by one technique, which is in fact necessary, meaning when you arrive, when you arrive at, date, uh, at date capital T, 
you retrieve this tie, this, 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 uh, this value here, which is orthogonal to the value here. OK? So it's a console variate, but in fact, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's necessary for various issues. So as I said, as, go, as the, um, delta uh, t, capital T, k goes to 0, the variance has a problem. In fact, if you mix two successive weights involving uh, delta tk, for example, you will have uh, delta ak, which is uh, in order delta tk uh, exponent uh, 0 0.5, and you have this, which is exponent minus 1. So if you, if you do, uh, you, 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 you take all the terms corresponding to delta tk, you've got something like this. And if you suppose that the Brosnan process follow a, a Poisson process, the, the, a condition with respect to the number of, of the branching dates, the conditional law of the increments is uniform. Uh, and uh, what you get is this is equal to this with this an exponential. And it is not integrable. Meaning that, in fact, if you use some, uh, some uh, uh, Poisson process for this, uh, for this scheme, you will have an infinite variance. So what you can do is to change the process. So we propose, uh, this is a work with uh, <coughs> Nadia Ujan and uh, um, Amadou Dumbia to change the process. And we are using a, a gamma law, a, a gamma law. So the gamma law, if you inject this, you will see that this is, a, uh, is order of order uh, delta tk exponent one minus two kappa. Kappa is a parameter of the gamma law. So a sufficient condition for bond invariance, because we don't know what is the conditional law when you, uh, when you condition with a number of, uh, of, uh, of gems, uh, is that the exponent here should be positive. So we got no in integrability problem. If this is, is negative, is, uh, the integration should may fail, but uh, we don't know. But we think that it may fail. So to be sure that you have no integrity, integrity problem, it, it is enough to take kappa below 0 0.5. And you've got a rigorous demonstration for body variance in, uh, in, uh, in the paper with, uh, with Nadia. Uh, besides, uh, you can use some variance reduction with interaction particles, a la Delmoral, for those who knows, and we've tested them. So what we've tested, uh, Dimension, uh, resilient dimension four. Uh, we took uh, sigma as uh, this uh, as this function with a coefficient a. We, we tested some uh, different a. Uh, J function was given this way. You see that we it's quite a not so so hard function. And for mu, we took uh, uh, we, uh, y minus x and we bonded by uh, in absolute value by ten. So here is a reference. Uh, what you can see is that uh, on this case, with exponential, you know, it's, not, it's not so bad. Exponential is oscillating, but it's not so bad. When you take a gamma law with a, a kappa equal to uh, 0 0.3 or 0 0.5, yeah, it's good here. Uh, here I plotted uh, uh, the log of the standard deviation with an, uh, in function of the log of the number of particles. And it should be a straight line. The theoretical result should be a straight line because it's a mathematical method. It should be a straight line with a, a slope uh, 0 point, minus 0 0.5. So you can say that, uh, in fact, if you use resampling uh, with the uh, Delmoral methods, you can even uh, upgrade the solution. You get a very, a very nice, uh, you've got a very nice uh, a slope which is a, the, the theoretical one, so it works uh, very well. So here it was taken with a equal to 0 0.5 in dimension 4. If you, of course, if you take the problem, if you take coefficients higher for the diffusion, for example, here you can see that without resampling, uh, all the methods were failing. And uh, using resampling, uh, it was uh, 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 the methods were, were, uh, were behaving uh, uh, very well. So this is a result of in dimension five, four. But uh, this method is eff effective only for small maturities, small changes of coefficients. It permits to avoid the time discretization, but it can compete with a uh, uh, layer uh, in general case. You, you must have small changes in coefficients 
Otherwise, it's, uh, it doesn't work very well. Okay, and there was a similar, uh, uh, similar work by uh, Ko Yatsu. Uh, Ko 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I always uh, mix with his name. Uh, then after, we will go to uh, some millionaire equation. I propose you uh, five minute breaks just uh, to recover because we, we, before we start with semi-linear and full non-linear uh, equations. Uh, if you have questions, perhaps... Uh, one more? Two. Two, yes. Okay, so, so the way I saw it, the, the charm of these particle schemes is that you do not need to discretize time. So in your case, you have particle schemes, but you still have backwardation and time grid. So what is the, the benefit of particle ah, schemes? The benefit is that you can treat I dimension. I showed okay. that it was possible in dimension five. Okay. And uh, so it's kind of so it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. Of course, uh, otherwise. Uh, uh, there was still an interpolation problem, so I, okay. I don't think I can go uh, higher than uh, dimension six or seven. With sparse grid, it depends if you have to keep the boundary points or not. If you, I don't know if you know sparse grids. But with sparse grid, when you, you we don't care about the boundary uh, the boundary values. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, when the, the dimension is very high, all the points are on boundaries, meaning that in fact the point inside the number of points inside is very low. So you can, you can uh, approximate a function in dimension, uh, in dimension 10 or, or 12, for example, with quite a few points. I see. But uh, if the boundary, if the, the values of the boundaries are very important, uh, no. Okay. The, the well, my second question is that you, you mentioned these various problems rather late in the talk. Uh, are not they everywhere with these schemes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Uh, branching, the problem is the variance. That's the reason why uh, I want to, to kill the variance uh, uh, when I can. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So we will go on perhaps uh, with uh, with a semi linear branching. So I will take an example. In fact, it's, it's the same as before. You will, take, you will have the same weights that appear, first order uh, my even weights that will appear here uh, with the density problem. And I will show you on the, the example for this uh, nonlinearity here. So the, you suppose that you've got a, a Laplacian, uh, a very, very simple one. The final, con the final condition is always J. And you suppose that the nonlinearity is this one. You've got uh, 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 this, uh, t this term, which is uh, uh, y2, and uh, the product of the derivative by the function value. So what you can do is always the same. Once again, you use Feynman CAC, OK, dividing by, by f and multiplying by, uh, by f bar and dividing by f bar, and multiplying by rho and dividing by rho. So you can say that, OK, with the same uh, reasoning, uh, you've got uh, that u is the expectation of a, of a, of a function phi uh, uh, when, you, when you branch as a, at, at the t, uh, capital T1. And uh, the value of the process is uh, the Brownian, because this is a Laplacian in, uh, in, uh, in the process. So sampling, you sample, as before, you, you have to choose you, you have to choose which term you will treat. So you see that here, uh, one half, so this is a probability. So we'll, uh, you, will, uh, you will, uh, will take this term with probability one half, one out of two, and uh, the other one otherwise. So you sum. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not linear. Why? It's y, so it's u, u2. Oh, okay. See, it's u2 and u du. OK? It's f u du. Okay. No, it's not x. Uh, OK, so you've got that u is the expectation of a, a, a phi function. The phi function is always the same. If uh, capital T1 is above t, 
you will get the final value divided by, uh, by this term. Otherwise, you've got to treat the nonlinear term. And here, you've got D0 or D1 depending on the value taken by I1. OK? So on the event, if uh, uh, you, you, on the event, so you take uh, uh, the nonlinearity of uh, U2, you will have this called U2. And you take uh, the previous scheme, and you've got that U square is equal to the expectation of this value here, uh, uh, taken here, squared. OK? By independence, uh, using the, the uh, Using the, the, the relation here, you've got that uh, uh, u squared is equal to the product of the expectation, and you mix everything together. You take the expectation out by independence. On the event uh, you, you've got uh, uh, i uh, one, which is equal to one, you, you have to take into account the derivative. So you've got the same introducing uh, uh, two uh, 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 two uh, variable here random variable here, and you will have the derivative here and the function value here. Using automatic differentiation, you will have the expectation of the function value here multiplied by the weight, the Malivan weight occurring here. By independence, you've got that uh, udu is equal to this one, the expectation of the product of the C function. Here, you've got a Malivan weight due to the fact that you've got one derivative. So if you plug uh, this expression into the, initial, the, into the initial expression, you will get this equation. So if, you, if at t1 you arrive at uh, cap, date capital T, you will get this term. Otherwise, you've got, you will have a weight. And the weight will depend on the value you've taken for i. If it's only uh, the nonlinear part, which is u2, you have a weight which is equal to 1. And if you draw uh, uh, Random, uh, random variable equal to 1, you will have a Malivan weight which is, uh, which is involved. So you have this multiplied by the u function okay, at, the following, uh, at, the following, uh, at the following branching. So it's the same. Once again, if t1 uh, i for i equal to 1 to 2 is equal to, to capital T, you take the value j here. Otherwise, you go on. And you go on, you go on, till you arrive uh, at maturity. It's always the same. It's the same as before, but instead of having uh, some weights which are constant, you have some malleable weights occurring, depending on the fact that you treat the derivative or not. So it's a very simple rule to apply. So in this fact, uh, for the general case, you can treat some, uh, some, uh, some term like this. And uh, uh, well, the term here, in fact, is. Uh, a, a L term is uh, L0 here, and the product of some bi z exponent Li, just a representation, and you make a summation of all the L in capital L. So you will treat a, a non irregularity with this term. In fact, in all the results, we will have one or two terms, so it will be uh, far more easier. So as I said before, uh, the, the, you've got the same galton watson tree construction as before for general uh, f of u. <coughs> and for a particle k, i k permits to identify the term to treat as before. So you will sample i to know which term you will treat inside. Okay? For example, on the event i k equal to l, l equal to l0, l1, lm, you will consider this term. And uh, of course, when uh, uh, i k equal to l, you will generate uh, uh, the cardinal of uh, the sum of l e particles, and the, the, you will mark the particles depending it's, uh, if it's a, a particle associated to a, to a non gradient or a gradient. When it's a particle associated to a gradient, you will may mark it by one. So I'll show you an example of a Dickelton Western tree. You suppose that f is equal to this one, you've got a constant. constant for y as a function of x, and you've got a, a, here a term for y and a term a y, z. Here, you've got a branch. A branch here, and what you, you, you see, you've, you've, got two, uh, you've got two branches, two branches, and the red will be for the derivative, and the blue will be for the function value. 
So here it means that you've, you've taken this term here. So, so you, you will have a, a here you get a function value, here you got a derivative. Then, then once again you sample, you got only one line is the function value, meaning that you have taken this term, you have drawn this term. Here you got two terms, the derivative and the function value, and once again you got the derivative and function value. And here you, when you sample, you, you've got the i is, is equal to zero. So you've got this value. Okay, and the particle is dying here. So when, the party, when, you, when, you, when you fetch this, the particle dies and disappears. So the representation is the same as before, but it involves some even weights. So all you have to do, all you have is that you take the final value of j when, uh, when the particle arrives at date capital T. When it's, when it's uh, a gradient, because you want to use a gradient reduction when a uh, valence reduction when there is a gradient weight. So when the weight corresponds to a gradient, you use valence reduction here, meaning that if theta k is not equal to zero, you add this term. Okay? And for all of the particles that lived before, meaning all the particles here, 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 that not arrived here, all you have to do, you have to add some, some weights to, to multiply the weights. So you will, you will have some, uh, some weight here, and there will be uh, either one, either a Magellan weight multiplied by this, this function, depending if you, you have a derivative or a u function. This term is necessary if to have, a, to have a, a, a variance reduction, to have a, a, a finite variance. And uh, u, you've got uh, that u is equal to the expectation of c. So suppose that uh, under this condition, you've got these this conditions on, on PL, and that uh, yeah, the row satisfies this condition, meaning that you have a lot of small jumps. So you see that rho should be uh, above this for k between uh, 2 and plus infinity, meaning that you've got a lot of small jumps. If uh, mu and sigma are bounded con uh, continuous, bounded continuous uh, partial gradients, d, d mu, d sigma, and if sigma is uniformly elliptic, you, if you have some, uh, and you have some conditions, uh, integration conditions of, uh, of CL, then you can show that, in fact, uh, as I said, ex expectation of, of CL is bounded, and you've got that the variance, the variance is bounded. Uh, I will, uh, in fact, uh, this is a trick, in fact, you will consider C exponent S and we will bond all these coefficients and we will show that uh, uh, there is one S for which the representations with the bounded coefficient correspond to the branching representation of an EDO with a bounded value. And because you've got an integrability, you will have this, uh, this the, exponent, the expectation of, C, uh, of CS is bounded by the expectation of fiat which is a branching representation of the ADO, and we know that it's, it's, uh, it's bounded because of these results. So, and we know that it's converging towards a viscosity solution. Uh, in practice, to summarize, it works if you've got small coefficients, that's here is true, small coefficients, small maturities, and uh, you have to take uh, rho uh, as, a, for example, a gamma low with kappa less than 0 0.5. So wh what you want is to have time step, uh, small time step with a high probability. In fact, meaning that you've got some small time step, you will have a lot of, uh, a lot of weights multiplying, meaning that you have quite a high variance, in fact. But it's bounded. Uh, variance intuition when you use a gamma low. In fact, it's the same as before. Uh, in fact, we Nadia, when we made the calculation uh, for in the, for the linear case, we we, we saw uh, uh, that it was working for the for the uh, for the nonlinear, the semi uh, semi linear one. And then we went to see uh, Xiaolu and Nizar and say, okay, do the demonstration because uh, we were not able to do it. And Xiaolu did it. <laughs> Uh, so what you have is the same as before, meaning uh, if you, you, you see this term, you've got this, this, uh, this exponent here, and you want this exponent to be positive, to be sure that the variance is bounded. So uh, this is the intuition, this is the same as before. And uh, you can see, uh, uh, in fact, uh, if you want to use the same scheme with a full nonlinear equation, you will have a problem. 
because you will, if you look at this term, you will, will see that it's this term, and whatever the, the row you take, you will have some integrability problem. Meaning that this methodology only works for semi-linear equations. Okay? So man, now I will show you a small test case. In, uh, I will take a, a gamma low with kappa equal to 0 0.5 and theta equal to uh, 2.5. And here is uh, uh, the, the f function I, I took. So uh, you've got uh, k, which is a cosinus multiplied by uh, one fun function. And you've got uh, uh, something quite uh, not, uh, not a burgers, but quite a burgers type. So you've got u du multiplied by the function. We take uh, uh, c equal to 0 0.15, alpha equal to 0 0.2, and we, we want to estimate the value at this point. So uh, this is a small non-linearity non decreasing with dimension, and uh, a j is bounded by 1 because uh, the solution of, this, uh, of the problem is this one. It's a cosinus multiplied by exponential, so at maturity it's a cosinus. So what we wanted to check, what I wanted to check, <laughs> is that uh, uh, before using the branching is to, to see that the non linearity has an impact on the solution. Because we were able to treat some uh, small non linearity term, but we want that the non linearity has an effect, otherwise it's not very use, uh, useful. So uh, for the linear solution, when you've got a, a solution which is S1, you can see that the non linear solution uh, uh, previously given this was calculated by uh, by Feynman Kac and this one by the by the uh, by the analytical solution. You see there is a 15 uh, 50 percent difference, 15 percent of difference uh, between the two, meaning that the nonlinearity has an impact. So uh, with with Rene, we are speaking of uh, PDAs in dimension uh, uh, 100, but here I can go to 100. I, I I went to 20, but no problem to go to 100 with this test case. Uh, for example, in dimension four, here the, the convergence, well, the number of the particles, you, 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 you have the, um, the rate of, uh, of convergence, so the, the log of the standard deviation uh, as a function of the log of the number of particles, you've got the good slope uh, uh, minus 0 0.5. Dimension 10, it's okay, same. Dimension 20 is it's the same. I could go to dimension 40, it's the same. Okay. So I could say, oh, I've solved the problem in dimension 100, but uh, it's a special case, uh, it's a sympathetic case. And I'm sure that uh, all the people that say they have solved the problem in dimension 100, uh, they were, uh, there was a trick. <laughs> uh, uh, what is the problem with the gamma laws? Gamma laws permits to get finite variance methods a uh, kappa should be taken below 0 0.5, so you've got a high number of germs, and the computation time, meaning that the computation time is very important. The more your germs, the more time it takes to go to maturity, so uh, the longer it takes to, to estimate your, uh, your sample. Uh, what I will propose, if I have time, but it's uh, more complicated, <laughs> to use uh, what we call the Gauss methods, uh, to permit to this uh, with longer maturities, and in fact to use a uh, uh, Gaussian uh, to use a uh, uh, Poisson process. What uh, we didn't say, in fact, if you want to reduce the variance, it's possible to use nesting. In fact, you see that uh, each time you, you've got an, an, an expectation to, to calculate, for example, here. Each time you put an explanation to calculate, uh, uh, an expectation to calculate, you can resample only once. But if you, do, you branch not too, too many times, you say, okay, I can sample two, two or three times. And it, in fact, is decreasing a lot of variance. And uh, it's, it's an idea. I will show you later. So this is the first thing we can take. Then after, I will show you the, the, ghost, uh, the ghost methodology where well, we have no proof of convergence, meaning that if you want uh, uh, to have, a, a, I think, a good paper, you can try to prove that it's converging. We know that it's converging for small maturities and small coefficients, but uh, I don't think it's very easy. So do you, with the nesting, do you reintroduce 
No, because you net, nest on each. Yeah, oh, no, only three, three particles, two particles instead of one. Each time you branch. So the problem is if you want to do nesting, instead of uh, you want to have largest times, uh, larger steps. Otherwise, if you branch uh, 10 times, you will have uh, two exponent, exponent 10 particles. That will be the problem. Yes, it's true. That's the reason why with Ghost, we can, uh, using Ghost, we'll use uh, exponential laws, and exponential laws are, have a, a quite a large time step. So it's... Uh... So what, another problem with the methodology. In fact, I said that, in fact, when you've got a general SDE, it's better to use another scheme than the previous scheme that we, we proposed. And the problem is that when you use another scheme, you use a step discretization. And when you want to estimate the gradient, what you will do, in fact, is to integrate by part, but only on a small time step. Here is a time step due to the, to the branching, but your SDE is solved here and here and here. So um, it's easier, okay, is to say, okay, I want, uh, uh, I will use uh, this estimator and I will, uh, I will cut, so I will take the minimum of delta T and delta uh, capital T, okay? And we know that when the time steps are going uh, smaller and smaller, the variance is exploding. This is a problem when you want to use another scheme. With the Gauss methods, everything is solved, but it's much more complicated. <laughs> um, so, once again, burgers without ghosts. So, if you've got a, a nonlinearity u du, which is this one. So, you know that uh, u is the expectation of this phi function, the same as before with the nonlinearity, always the same. On the event t1, above capital T, just compute this. On the event T1 less than capital T, you've got to calculate, to estimate this for one particle. And what you will do is to take the, the previous estimation for U and DU using the automatic differentiation rule. And you will see that you've got this multiplied by this. You multiply, the you mark the particle by zero when it's, uh, 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 when it's a U term and by one when it's uh, a gradient term. So, renormalization. This is due to a paper that was not published. Another paper, the paper I told you, because we couldn't, uh, we couldn't prove that it was converging, and Nizar didn't want to, to have just a numerical paper. But uh, Xiaolu, uh, Pierre-Henri Lavandère, and myself were in favor of publishing it. But, but uh, so it has been uh, waiting in the, in the, in the cupboard uh, for two years. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, it could stay uh, <laughs> quite a long time if we have no help. So the, what is the idea is to use, uh, we want to use a, a, a Gaussian, we want to use a, a Poisson process, but you know that you have a, a, a differential, some, uh, some problem of integrability. So you, you will use what we call a ghost particle. What is a ghost particle? We want this to be very small. And we want this to be orthogonal to this. Uh, the, on, the only way to do this is to say, OK, I create a particle that will have the same future of this particle, except for the increment corresponding to this. So removing this increment in the, in the, in the, in the dynamic of, the, of this particle, you, of course, the expectation of this multiplied by this is equal to 0. And if you take the same future, you are sure that the difference of the two values is small enough uh, such that this is, this is a variance reduction. So it's very easy. Very easy. So it acts as a control variate. And uh, um, the, wait, this is what I said. In fact, it permits to use every densities, so exponential, with finite variance in the, in the linear case. But in the nonlinear, we don't have any, any, any results. So what is a ghost? In fact, it's quite, quite complicated. Because you will have an origi original galton watson tree, which is this one, meaning, for example, your sample for the, for, the, for the bonion, you've got the increment here, here, and here. So the value here is a summation of all the increments here. If you want to introduce a ghost, the ghost here, it, it, 
its value is a value achieved here because you remove this value. So the value achieved here, so it's hard to see, but it's one, uh, uh, one, uh, one uh, ghost and uh, one, so this is the value here plus the value here. So it has the same future, the same value taken here, you take them, you just remove this part. So you, we have uh, created a ghost particle. So what I call the, the original uh, randomization for ghosts in Labordaire, it's a scheme I, I, show, I showed you. Uh, each time you've got a gradient, you introduce a ghost, a ghost particle with the same future, and you put it here. So you use a backward recursion, you begin with the final value of the fiat, and you got this recursion to calculate uh, phi, phi, uh, phi one for particle one, and then you take the expectation. The only difference is that you add this term that permits you to have every, um, every density you want, whatever the process is. And there is a paper uh, I've written more on numerics, on some evolution of this, uh, of this methodology. And you, you can introduce, as I said, uh, some antithetic ghosts, meaning that inside of freezing the particle, you take uh, uh, the particle with increments uh, minus uh, value of the brain of the, of the brain motion. And you've got finite variance in the linear case, of course. In the full linear case, we don't have any results. So I will show you some results. Met method A is uh, the previous method with a gamma. Uh, no, the, the method with a, uh, with a, with a ghost, uh, uh, original ghost. Here, method B is a method with the antithetic ghost, I think, and method C is a method, uh, the, the, the first method with a, with a gamma. So all on converging, and what you see is that method, uh, oh, it, no, method B is a method with a, with a gamma, and here is a method with a gamma with a del moral reduction variance. And uh, what you see, uh, the method with uh, the ghost here is behaving uh, quite well. And uh, the, 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 the first method with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the gamma low, it's converging, mas oscillating, and you, you can see in the, in the convergence rate here. So this is an analytic case, the case in dimension three, uh, with a, a non linearity in this term, C, which is equal to 0 0.2, maturity equal to 1, and a B coefficient, which is this one. So this is a, a comparison of the original Gauss versus uh, uh, the, the gamma, the gamma laws. If you use an antithetic Gauss and you use nesting, for example, now here, this is uh, the original Gauss version. Here is the antithetic Gauss version sampling nesting with two particles and four particles. Here is one particle and two particles. And you see that the antithetic version is behaving far better than the, uh, the first, first reduction variance techniques. So this is for burgers uh, in dimension six for maturity equal to three. If you, uh, I've, I've, I've got a non-linearity, which is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the gradient uh, squared, you see that uh, in fact, the original method, uh, Gauss method, doesn't converge. Uh, antithetic methods converge. Of course, if you use nesting, it's converging far better. So you can do the same for uh, the calculation of DU. If you want to estimate DU for sensibility calculation, it's, uh, it's the same with the algorithm, exactly the same. And you can see that uh, a nested uh, method with antithetic Gauss is behaving, is behaving very well, and it's far better than uh, uh, original, what I said, original cost. So results are in dimension six uh, for maturity, which was equal to 1.5. So uh, I will finish, because I think it's, it's quite heavy <laughs> at last, <laughs> with, a, a non, uh, with a full nonlinear scale. Uh, in fact, uh, you can use the Gauss method to treat uh, a, a Laplacian non-linearity. Non so you can treat the non-linearity, which is this one. 
So you can use the original scheme with two ghosts uh, proposed by uh, Pierre-Henri Labordère and uh, co-authors, which is uh, uh, the classical uh, Maldivian weights here. And what you do is you use as a, the, the, the relation variance techniques I proposed before with, uh, with three points. So you freeze here, you freeze the position. You've got one ghost where you freeze the position the same future. Here you've got the entity ghost where you take, you take the increment uh, occurring here, minus one, and you take the same future after for all the increments. So you are sure that this is a really a, a variance solution technique. Uh, linear case, we know that it's uh, the same. In fact, uh, it's the same methodology. Uh, we think that uh, uh, if you, you, you can find, you can prove that it's true for the finite, uh, for the semi-linear case, it will be the case for the full linear case. So, uh, so what I propose is then is the, the scheme I propose to, to reduce uh, the, the, the variance uh, further. Instead of using the first Maldivian, uh, the second order Maldivian weights, to use two first order Maldivian weights. That's what I proposed. So what you do is just uh, you freeze uh, here the, the 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 position of the particle. You've got two increments here. First you freeze the position of the particle, so no increments. And here you take the first increment, and here you take the second increment, and you derive the scheme. And with the scheme, in fact, it will show that. Uh, uh, it can be better. Uh, Bound on the variance indicate a, a potential smaller variance value uh, on this new scheme. Further, you can use an entity ghost, as I, as I said before, on the second scheme with seven ghosts that can be used. But of course, higher a number of ghosts means higher memory requirements. And uh, higher derivatives are easy to treat this way uh, in a, a derivative of order three, four, it could be possible. A test case to, to finish. So you, you, you take a, a full nonlinearity with this one. So this is a Laplacian multiplied by u. And uh, uh, in dimension, uh, dimension 6, alpha equal to 0 0.2, mu equal to 0 0.2, sigma, which is given here. Here is the solution, always the same. So uh, I said version 1, version 2, version 3. Version 1 is for. Uh, uh, the, 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 the variance reduction technique using uh, the ghost, uh, the, the classical scheme, meaning uh, the second order, uh, uh, the classical scheme. Then after I used two versions, the version I developed with, uh, with antithetic is the last one, and this one taking two uh, first order step, not even step on two. And what you, you can see is that uh, version, uh, version three is behaving be better in this test case. And it's always the same. So if you, 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 tell you want to see uh, uh, the derivative of u, for example, you want to plot this derivative, you see that with, uh, with the scheme uh, 3, which is uh, the very uh, complicated scheme with uh, uh, antithetic, it's converging uh, uh, far better. Dimension 6 with t equal to 1. Another non-linearity non uh, non is this one, so the last one. So it's uh, quite complicated. The Laplacian multiplied by a derivative. And uh, it's harder to converge, but you still see that uh, uh, the scheme uh, version 3 is also the most complicated uh, with reduction variance techniques. is converging uh, better. OK, I think that I'm finished. Perhaps a uh, little quicker. If you have any, any questions. So once again, uh, try it and uh, try to find uh, the demonstration. <laughs> the, the thing is that you, you have this Malian weight where you have the Brownian increment. Mm -hmm. So in the ghost, you just remove this Brownian increment, so the expectation of the product remains zero. Okay. <laughs> just complete. Other questions? You will have the slides available on the on the website, yeah, so you can take time to read all these things and. Uh, because it was dense. Yeah, it's perhaps. Uh, 
Maybe I have one comment because you, uh, in the polynomial case, uh, you said several times that you need small time uh, horizon and uh, small uh, nonlinearities. But uh, anyway, the PDE is, is defined only on small time interval. So yes, so that's so where in the example we took, uh, we had a, uh, a solution, a solution which has a, ah. yeah. So even. Uh, so even in this case, the variance, maybe even if it's bounded, it's so high that you can't, uh, you can't catch the results. Come in. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to leverage the nesting method not only to, to treat the um, not only polynomial nonlinearities, but for example, if you make approximations, uh, discrete uh, time uh, approximations or kind of Euler type BSD schemes at each step of the nesting and then use the branching process to compute sort of uh, conditional expectations of this approximated. Uh, it, it, should, it should be possible to, instead of regressions... In, instead of approximating the driver with local polynomial, yeah. would it be possible to do something like this with a nested method or...? I'm not sure I understand uh, because... Uh, so if you approximate inside the time interval, yeah. And at each, let's say, time point at which you nest, you make some kind of dis discrete time approximation of the uh, PD you're approximating. Um, perhaps you can leverage the fact that you're using random time grids in the nesting to sort of. I don't know how we could speak together <laughs> to. I don't understand how we could. Uh... Perhaps we should sit down and yeah. have a. Have a look. But if yeah. you have an estimate, it's true. If you have an estimate of the PD, you can use it uh, to avoid interpolation. Meaning that you know that the solution is very close to something. You could use this proxy for the fashion for the fee, for the for the function phi. It's possible. Yeah, exactly. And the error should be very small. Mm. It's also, I guess, a bit of a question about generalizing the linear problem to a non-linear problem, because there, of course, you use Euler schemes for the SDE, mm. but of course, there's also an Euler scheme for the BSD, which maybe it's possible to leverage with the discrete, uh, the random time grid in order to avoid the discretization error. I don't know if that's... Yeah, to avoid discretization error, and then, uh, yeah, perhaps we could think about it. <laughs> I think it's possible. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. uh, so it's a Bali Kwa No, it's Bali Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And that's why you also... Uh, uh, if you use this kind of uh, random uh, time grid, you also don't really have to tackle the regularity of the Z guy yeah. in the BSD. And uh, you can prove convergence without, uh, before the, the result of uh, Yan Feng. I didn't try it. <laughs> I don't know whether Vlad really tried. Other questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much.